A family or group refers to a particular column in the periodic table. And because of the way the periodic table is organized, each member of a family or group has the same number of valence electrons and thus it behaves quite similarly to other members of its family. And so there are a few families that you should be familiar with and we'll go through those in this video. The leftmost column is known as the alkali metals and these are noted for having a very, very soft consistency. They have a low density, a low melting point and are highly reactive because all they need to do is lose one electron and then they reach that stable noble gas configuration. And so a lot of these alkali metals such as sodium and potassium are very important minerals in physiology such as sodium and potassium which are a big part of the action potential in neurology as well as very very useful for a lot of kidney function and, and renal conditions. The next column in is the second column of the periodic table, and this family is known as the alkaline earth metals. If you have trouble remembering which name refers to which, just realize that it is in alphabetical order. Alkali comes before alkaline, and so that's a way to remember which is the first column and which one is the second. The alkaline earth metals are harder, have a greater density, and a greater melting point than the alkali metals. And they're not as reactive. Only the heavy ones, uh, calcium and down, tend to be fairly reactive. And even calcium could be debated about its reactivity. But those are the two columns on the left. And those are very important groups because they only have to lose one or two electrons in order to bond ionically. And they have very, very distinct qualities about them. As we move to the right side, we approach the halogen family, which is the seventh column, and the noble gases, which is the final column. Halogens are only one electron away from completing their octet. And so they are often very, very useful, for example, in making strong hydrides, strong hydrogen acids. So if you have HCl, HBr, HI, those are very strong acids. And they're also very useful in a lot of organic chemistry because all they need to do is make one covalent bond. And by making that one covalent bond, they then gain the one electron necessary for them to reach that stable noble gas configuration. Those are represented with X a lot of times, so they might say HX in place of HCl or HBr or something like that. And they're also very electronegative. So recognize that when you have some molecule with a halogen in it, the electronegativity will be skewed toward the halogen, and thus the electron density will be far closer to the halogen, and it won't be distributed evenly between the two members of that covalent bond. Noble gases are kind of where all of these atoms want to get because the noble gas has a complete octet. They have filled their s orbital and all of their p orbitals and thus they have the complete octet configuration and are very stable. A lot of these things will ionize in a way to reach that noble gas configuration, whether it's a halogen gaining an electron or one of these losing an electron if it's an alkali metal or losing two electrons if it's an alkaline earth metal. That noble gas configuration is highly sought after and these are very, very stable non-reactive compounds. So just be aware that you're less likely to see these react as much as these are going to be something that other atoms aspire to be.